Welcome to the latest EnviroTube. Today we're going to a house in Kringai, and Kringai Council has this very interesting program called the Native Bee Program. That's where we place native beehives, stingless native beehives, on residents' properties. The way we do this to make it cost effective, because these hives cost four to five hundred dollars to buy, the existing hives that we already have in Kringai, we turn one hive into two. Sort of like magic, but it's a bit more, <laughs> a bit more straightforward, and you're about to see how we do it. The hive is placed on the deck and it's a perfect location for people to actually connect with the bees. What is the point of putting a native beehive at the back of your property? You're not going to see it, it's going to lose all its education value. So many people in Australia, probably the world, hate insects. So what we're trying to do is get people to understand that not every insect you see or don't understand or know is a problem. If you can get children to understand that not every insect is going to attack them, that some insects are actually beneficial and fun. I've seen little two-year-olds stand in front of tetragonular hives. Bees land on them, they look at them, bees don't hassle them. They're really establishing a positive relationship with an insect. Now that's something worth money. I've got to be careful because if I fall with this hive, a lot of the good work we do is completely undone. Okay, so we're now at the splitting station. I'm going to place the hive down. Now I'm just going to get some masking tape so that we can seal up the hive because we don't want bees flying everywhere or we want to minimise the bees flying everywhere while we do the split. Now I'm just going to seal it now but I've double sided the tape. The idea we don't want the bees to stick themselves on it because we love the bees and we don't want them to die. The next stage of this split is to actually put on some protective gear and open up the hive because this is just a foam box. Inside the foam box is the actual wooden hive. Now we need the protective gear because although these bees don't sting, they do nibble. Now look, if I didn't care about bees, I'd just be killing them, I'd be putting insecticide on me, and, or we try not to do that, we try and be as organic as possible. So we're going to put on the protective gear because if you have an, a bee eating your eyelid, that takes a lot of self-control not to go a little bit crazy. And there's no orifice that's safe. If you've got a nose or an ear, mouth, they'll find it, they'll try and get in it. Now I am absolutely safe. Now when you do splits, you need a whole lot of tools. So we have here, a mallet. I mean this could be anything, it could be a hammer. We also have something here called a bee tool. This is a, a tool used by Apiris and this is actually to lever the boxes apart. Now first thing we have to do is get the foam off. Now that can be problematic, sometimes the bees resin it up. Oh, okay, so you can actually see you have to put a fair bit of force into this sometimes. So we've got this off but you can see that the wooden hive is actually stuck to the foam. So now Liz, she's going to try and work it out. I have with me Liz Gibson, who's the Wild Things Officer. We find that two people doing a split makes it a lot easier. Okay, so we have the hive out and we have to reseal the hive. And again, on this one it has two entrances, wouldn't you know it? Okay, this will definitely limit the number of bees that are going to come out because when we open the hive, there's going to be a fair bit of excitement from the bees. So I, go, I mean, imagine that a tornado just ripped through your place, you tend to get a bit irate. You can see we've got the empty hives. The whole point of a hive split is to put, separate this box, which is actually made up of two halves, to put the full top onto the empty bottom and this empty top on the full bottom. Now, the interesting thing about tetragonular is that the egg mass is in the middle of the hive, surrounded by pollen and honey. When you pull the top half off, actually get half the egg mass, you get half the uh, pollen and honey, you get half the hive. Now one half is going to have the queen, one half isn't going to have the queen, but all the eggs sort of are littered with queen cells. That means that every hive has the ability to make a queen as required. So what we're going to do now is get the bee tool and actually separate this hive. 